Good morning. We are so glad you are here with us this morning. I have just a few announcements. Today it is the fifth Sunday fellowship. Uh, it'll be after the nine o'clock service. It'll be during our Sunday school hour in the fellowship hall. Check out the new carpet while you're in there, and I will tell you, it looks great. Um, today there will be pickleball at 1.30. The men's Tuesday breakfast group and Wednesday night group will meet this week. Uh, for our services, there is now a flower calendar. If you'd like to sign up for placing some flowers up here on the altar on a Sunday morning, that calendar is outside the office. The kids are going skating tomorrow morning. They will be leaving here at 1030. And VBS is just right around the corner. And if you'd like to help, we would just love to have you. And also, if you like to do decorations, we also need help doing that. So if you would like to do any of that, you can let any of us know in the office. Also, Tara, how did everyone, I think everyone made it to the Dominican Republic, right? And everyone's safe? Did everyone end up with their luggage? Still working on that. I think they had a little adventure yesterday while they were traveling to the Dominican Republic, but they all made it there safe. And I saw their picture up on Facebook, and they're on their way to church this morning. But I think that is about it, so I'll turn it right over to Steve. Good morning. Would you please stand for our hymn of greeting? It's I Worship You, Almighty God. It's 146. your neighbor this morning. Please prepare for our call to worship. We remind ourselves that it's not us who choose Christ, but Christ, Christ who chose us. That we are not here because of our goodness, but because of Christ's grace. That we are not here to enlighten ourselves, but to allow Christ to enlighten us. That we have not come to be entertained, but to worship God with heart, soul, mind, and strength. Please join me in our prayer of invocation. Holy God, you call us to live out your justice and righteousness. 
Help us to walk in your footsteps so that we may never lose our way. Enable us to live and love in the way that you have taught us so that we can act in grace even with those who we consider our enemies. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Our hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness, 139. You may be seated. Please hear our call to confession. The God who demands justice from us is the God who pours out mercy upon us. Trusting in that gracious love, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God, we confess we have failed to live as your beloved sons and daughters. We have set our minds on the things of this world and neglected the inheritance of love you bestow upon your saints. We have pursued selfish aims in our daily business. We have harbored uncharitable thoughts toward our enemies and friends. We have avoided difficult responsibilities to our neighbors. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from our selfish ways and strengthen us to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. To our assurance of pardon. Hear the good news. Christ is merciful to all who turn to him in repentance. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. 
This morning we have a hymn change. Instead of the one listed in your program, we're going to be a little patriotic this morning. Please turn to 807 and let's sing together, My Country Tis of Thee, number 807. <laughs> My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side, let freedom ring. My native now enter into a time of sharing of prayer concerns. Um, here's some to let you be aware of. We need to be in prayer for those who recently lost, lost loved ones. Sherry Stovall's sister, Brenda David, passed away recently. Please keep their family in your prayers. We also need to pray for those who have been hospitalized or in assisted living facilities. One of our preschool teachers, LaDawn Cortez, husband Bob, had a heart attack this past week. We also need to pray for those who are recovering or in need of our prayer. Steve Fears, Kathy Craig, Richard Allen, Randy Spears, Ken Cowan, Sue Hill, Kim Maxson, Robin McDaniel, Tom Mailer, George King, and Reverend James Ward. Please continue to pray for Kevin Seiler, Mike Cunningham, Dan Birchfield, uh, Keith Neal, Jordan Butcher, Eddie Winger, Bob Elderman, Bob Hopkins, Teresa Peacock, Kim Clark, and uh, Carrie Butcher and Mike Givens. Heaven Belevin, Helen, sorry, Helen Belevins from Goshen CP Church has been diagnosed with an advanced cancer and they ask for prayers for her. We also have a special prayer request to please pray for those who do not know Jesus for themselves and for those who do not have a church to call their own. Also pray for us to invite others to be a part of this community of faith. Our missionaries, we need to pray for them while they are in the Dominican Republic this week. And there is a joy. George King came home Friday from his rehabilitation after his back surgery. Are there any others to be made aware of? Lee Bradfield. If there's not, let us go to God in prayer. Jesus Christ, the true vine. In our need, we come to you in weakness, needing your strength, for we too easily become dry and lifeless without your life-giving spirit. Jesus Christ, the true vine, teaches us to remain in you, and so to find your life flowing in us, giving strength and vigor to our discipleship. And as we come closer to you, our lives are drawn closer to each other. Our thoughts turn to Christians living in persecution who face danger simply for being linked to you. Father, prune back all that stands in the way of peace. 
On our hearts are people in need in our church and community. Wherever hearts are breaking, bodies are failing, minds are confused, families are ruptured. Lord, come with your help in healing. Lord, we lift up our mission team this morning as they start the work you have called them to do in the Dominican Republic. Be with them through every step and allow them to be your light in the world. Here too, as your church gathered today, we give thanks for the saints of the past and the fruit they have borne in our community and beyond. Like them, help us to remain in you that we may be fruitful and bring glory to your name. And now let us pray the prayer that you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning we continue in our Fruits of the Spirit sermon series. This morning we're going to be talking about kindness. And I find it funny when we pick our sermon topics and who's doing what. God always seems to test that fruit of the Spirit for the person giving the sermon. So I've been tested with my kindness, and I think you can see it throughout my sermon. But this morning, we're going to be from reading from Colossians 3, 12 through 14. Hear the word of God. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other. And forgive one another if any of you has grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. To start out this morning, I wanted to ask a question. And I'm going to ask for you to raise your hands. I promise you it's not an embarrassing question that I'm asking. By a show of hands, how many of you love to watch those random acts of kindness videos? I'll admit it. I'm one of them. I love to watch random acts of kindness videos. You know, it's those videos that make you feel good inside and make you shed a little tear a little bit. The videos that give you hope that in this world that is full of chaos, there is a shimmer of kindness in the world happening. One such video that I love to go back and watch over and over again is about a softball game that happened in the early 2000s. This is the story of Sarah Tokoski. Sarah played for the Western Oregon team, and they were playing against the Central Washington team. Sarah had stepped up, stepped up to the bat, all ready to hit the ball. The teams were neck and neck with each other, fighting for the conference championship. Sarah was a senior, and it was her last chance to be able to win a conference championship. She had never hit a home run until that day. She hit a three-run shoot right over the fence, allowing her team to be able to get a lead against the Central Washingtons. She started to round the bases, but she failed to touch first base. So she turned back to go touch first base for it to be able to even be counted. But as she turned back, all our team heard was Sarah yelling out in pain. Sarah dropped to the ground for she had torn her ACL when she turned back to go touch first base. Everyone watched as Sarah hugged first base because she was not able to run anymore due to her injuries. Due to the rules of the game, no one from her team could, could help Sarah or she would have been called out. But in stepped Central Washington players, Mallory Holtman and Liz Wallace, players from the opposing team. 
asked the home plate umpire if they would be okay to help Sarah round the bases and it still count for her. They were given the okay to carry Sarah around the bases. Mallory and Liz continued to pick up Sarah and walk her around each base and only touching her left foot, which was not hurt, to the bases. Sarah's coach stood in a complete shock watching the girls from the opposing team help Sarah be able to round the bases for her first and last ever home run of her softball career. The stadium stood in amazement watching this all unfold. One of the girls commented that as they looked up at the bleachers, she did not just see smiles on everyone's faces and she did not just hear clapping. She saw emotion and tears from all the fans. Mallory and Liz stepped up out of the kindness of their hearts to help someone on the opposing team round the bases and earn the points just as they probably would have been able to do that before. Every time I watch this video, I end up crying by the end of it. And my mom told me that's all my dad ever did when he watched the video. This is one of those videos that reminds me of the kindness that is still in our world even when it does not seem like there is any anywhere. This summer, we have spent time talking about the fruits of the Spirit. And today, we are going to be focusing on the fruit of the Spirit of kindness. Kindness, like all the other fruits of the Spirit, is an attribute of God. The reason we are to practice kindness is because he practiced kindness on us. Kindness is in a state of of mind or a mood. It's an action. And until it becomes a natural part of who we are, it needs to be an intentional action. That means until kind actions flow naturally from us because our hearts are filled with kindness, we have to practice kindness. Some of us can do that easily, and some of us have to try a little bit harder at it. Kindness is a virtue that stands out in a world of harshness and selfishness. It is evident not only on our faces, but especially in our words and actions. Kindness is an attribute that is a reflection of Christ in us. Kindness is produced by the spirit within us. It's also an attribute that we are expected to cultivate because it is commanded in God's word. Just from the verses that we read this morning, this brings us to the verses that we did read this morning. We read a small snippet of Paul's letter to the churches in Colossians. Paul is trying to teach the church how to get along with each other, much like we need to know today, while echoing, echoing the single lesson we hear throughout Scripture, which is to love one another, which we all sometimes forget. Paul offers five ways of life that Christians should try to follow and practice. In addition, he prefaces the list by referring to believers using three names. First, we see him use God's chosen ones. God selected or elected them to be a part of his family, just like we are. Second, these believers are holy, which means they are set apart. This is due to God's work in them, not their own good deeds. Third, Paul points out that believers are beloved by God, just like we are. Paul tells his believers that they should clothe themselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. More important than any other is the love. There's love behind each of them, which not only inspires the other traits, but which binds Christians together as a single family. Under Christ, Paul then opens the idea of following Christ to include every aspect of our lives. Whatever we think or do as believers ought to be compatible with the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. God calls us and wants us to be kind Paul makes it simple and to the point. Many of us have heard the famous quote, 
in a world where you can be anything, be kind. Parents and teachers have tried to instill in us to be kind to all of those that we may encounter, even though it may be hard sometimes. So in turn, from what we have been taught, we greet people with a smile and a polite nod. We care for our neighbors. We reach out to our friends. We're generous and understanding with all of our coworkers sometimes. We serve our communities, and we have spare change in our pocket, and we sometimes give it to another person who asks, and we do what we can for them. It is so easy for us to do simple acts of kindness, but God wants us to reach beyond that. He wants us to see others as he sees people. Kindness, like all of these virtues, before it's something we do, it's a way of seeing it. It means to see people with a different lens. From the end in the way made possible by Christ and through Christ, it means to come to see in the way that God can see, beyond the present. So Colossians urges us to remember that we have a new humanity, made possible through the resurrection of Christ. And because of that, we can be different kinds of people, not in the future, but now. We don't have to wait. We can live out our hope for the future right now in the present. presence. We can be kind as the work of Christ enables us to be kind. We can see as God intends for us to see. Kindness is seeing each other in the light of Christ. Jesus told a story about such kindness, and it's not simple or straightforward. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. A man is beaten and robbed on a journey, for there were bandits on the road. And so two people, one after the other, traveled the same path. They should help, but they chose to pass by and not help. But then a third traveler comes along and gets closer to the, the good, uh, gets closer to the man. And at first, this is a story about seeing. Dr. Martin Luther King once said of this parable, the first two see the wounded man and wonder only, if I help, what will happen to me? But the Samaritan sees and says to himself, if I don't help, what will happen to him? Dr. King spoke these words to station, uh, the sanitation workers in Memphis in his last speech before he was killed. Because there were bandits on the road, there are still those who stand violently against kindness and oppose with all the, they have with the new vision such kindness demands. Some will try to keep your vision corrupted and your actions blocked. For such kindness is a radical thing. It's a very dangerous thing in the world to go against everyone else. But the Good Samaritan teaches us that kindness always takes a risk. It comes near to the wounds of the, this world with a sense of mercy and commitment that are more pressing than the threats that might be lurking. Such kindness also returns. If we look at the end of Jesus' story that he tells of the Good Samaritan, he, the Good Samaritan says to the innkeeper, Look after him, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any in extra expense that you have. Because kindness is more than a random act, a one-time drop-off, or a momentary drive through Kindness asks who else might be wounded from whom we need to go back. What else might be done so people stop being wounded and left as though dead or disposable on life's highway? And what more must be paid so that the process of healing and restoration can be completed and fulfilled just as Jesus wants it to be? Ultimately, as I said earlier, kindness sees. This parable reminds us, perhaps as much as any story in the Bible, that the kindness of Christ is a way of seeing first. With a Samaritan on the road that leaves an Israelite in the ditch and pre presents the bold reminder that in the kingdom Jesus envisions, those opposed to one another 
Samaritan and Israelites, those who would otherwise be enemies can come to see one another differently. Even when we disagree, we can see each other in a different light. They can see in the other the capacity of kindness. They can see the enemy, the one with the capacity to heal. They can see that the face they despise is also in the likeness of God. Our world today is filled with disagreement and division, which makes it hard to be kind to those who are not so kind to others. When we establish ourselves in our identity in Christ, it means we should look, sound, think, and behave differently. Even when it may be hard to do so, it is all about what we choose to wear. When God's people fail to practice kindness, we fail to be God's people. Let me just say that again. When God's people fail to practice kindness, we fail to be God's people. When we choose unkindness instead of kindness, we are just adding to the chaos that is already going on in the world. Clothing ourselves in kindness allows us to see the world in a different light. It makes it easier to find the positive in the negative. There is a famous quote that says, Be kind, for everyone you might meet is fighting a hard battle. You may never know what someone is going through, but when we choose kindness over anything else, it may change someone's life for the better. It may make them have a better day without you even knowing it. I was introduced to this quote from the movie Wonder, and I will say if you haven't seen it, you should take a look into it, or if you are a reader, there is the book. I would highly suggest you take a look into it because it has a good life lesson into it. It is a movie that shows a young boy learning to choose kindness rather than unkindness to his bullies, even when it was super hard for him not to. At the end of the movie, he receives an award that is given to one student for their good moral character. As he receives the award, he says, Everyone in the world should get a standing ovation at least once in their life because we all overcome the world. As God's chosen people, holy and beloved, we are tasked daily to look at the world through a different lens and choose kindness rather than anything else. So let me ask you this. Have you clothed yourself in kindness today? And are you going to look at the world through the lens of Christ? Will you pray with me? Loving God, we thank you so much for this message this morning that we received and has came from you. Let it be a reminder to us that we always remember to clothe ourselves in kindness, even when it may be hard to. Allow us to see others in your light. Lord, be with us as we go out of here this morning to be the light in your world. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Please stand as we share together 571, Trust and Obey. We'll sing the first three verses. <laughs> shadow can rise not a cloud 
with the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other to trust and obey. And in ground and we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toll he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but it's blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Please remain standing for our affirmation of faith. Join me with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. seated. Let us bring to God the fruits of our labors. There is a box in the narthex for people like me, and if you are technically savvy, there are instructions in your pew.
thank you so much for our music today. The grace of Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Spirit be with you. I hope you know God, I hope you love God, and I hope that you show God so others will know God as well. God bless each and every one. Would you please stand as we share together what fruit of the spirits we have learned so far. And the fruit of the spirit is joy and love and peace and patience and today we add kindness. Let's share together, God bless America. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. God beside her 